Hey folks, I made another update to my brewing recipe template. You want to see what it is? Keep watching. Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a new version of my brewing recipe template out there, version 2.2 now, and uh, it, it's got some minor enhancements to it, but in order to make the minor enhancements, I've had to make some major uh, changes to the grain list, and I'll explain why. So I was starting to brew a brown ale, uh, which I have brewed, and it's ready to keg actually now, but I wanted to uh, get a better prediction of the color in this beer, and I got tired of looking up reference charts and doing these calcs off to the side uh, to figure out the color of, the, of, of how much chocolate malt to, to add, for example, to get the right shade of brown I want. So I went ahead and added a, a, a section in here for the SRM color on the recipe sheet as to, to give you an estimate roughly of what the color should be. But in order to support this, I had to basically redo the entire grain list that's, on the, the, that, that's in there. Uh, because there was, I had to add color to it, uh, a color column, so I had to go through the, every, each and every single grain and add a color column in there. And while I was doing that, I had to look up the actual malt sheets of all of these, uh, these, th these malts listed in there, which took quite a bit of time. So uh, I, another thing I did, besides add the color chart, was double check that the, uh, the, uh, the extract yield potential or the points per gallon values were actually accurate based uh, as compared to what's in there now because much of that that's in the old version uh, is actually just generalized uh, values so uh, i think basic two row malt was listed at 1.038 or something i'm guessing here uh, as a general rule of thumb but the truth is looking at, at all these malt sheets they, they're all different uh, for each maltster i mean that just makes sense so i actually went through there then and recalculated the actual uh, points per gallon value from the malt sheets themselves rather than using generic values and that changed uh, my, my efficiency uh, to the positive actually which is which actually answers a huge question for me I've had over the years like why am I just getting 72 or 75 percent efficiency with batch barging it was still pretty good but I'm thinking I'm doing everything right I should be getting closer to 80 well guess what I ran through these numbers, punched in the real values, which are a little slightly lower than these uh, optimistic values from, uh, from this general list I got from who knows where now in the past. And uh, so, so my brewer's tube row malt, I think is 1.036 now, not 1.037 or 38. And that actually brought my extract efficiency up to about 80%, right where I was hoping it should have been all along, which, which makes me feel so much better about my brewing process. But that is also a warning to you and to myself that uh, going forward, if you're using this version going forward, you might want to be cognizant of that, recalculate your recipes, uh, maybe double check your numbers between your old batch and this one, maybe adjust some of your uh, ratios of grains if you want, whatever, right? Just, but, just, but just keep that in mind. It, 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 it will, going forward, skew or change the recipe for your grain bill a little bit. Another enhancement I added to this thing was a forced carbonation uh, field on the recipe sheet to calculate the PSI or uh, bar or kilopascal if you're metric folks out there uh, for your keg because I've got a lot of questions as to uh, on my channel and videos as to what pressure they should be setting their keg to for certain beers and I kind of like, like this left that let that be to your own personal preference I always generally use 10 to 12 PSI for most of my recipes but however this style of brown ale that I mentioned that I'm brewing and about ready to drink pretty soon uh, actually, its ideal style is more of a uh, warmer, served warmer at a lower volume of CO2 than all my other beers. So uh, in, in my example, rather than 38 degree Fahrenheit beer at 11 PSI, this is uh, served at around 50 degrees ideally at a lower um, volume of CO2. So my general beers I would make would be about two and a half volumes of CO2 for reference. This is this style of brown ale is, you know, as low as one, one and a half. Uh, it's below two generally, and the the formula for this is to how much psi that you need to put in your beer, 
is based upon two things, the temperature that you're serving at and the volume of CO2 that you want in your beer, AKA how fizzy you want it to be. So you punch these numbers in and it tells you the PSI. So now, rather than having to do these hand calcs off to the side or, or guess with a rule of thumb, now there's a, a field on there, you punch in your, your kegerator temperature, you punch in the, uh, the volume of CO2 that you wanna use and it will tell you what PSI to set it to. So that's a good thing too. So I hope you like these changes. Uh, I'm actually enjoying them already. I, uh, the uh, beers turned out to be the right color I expected thanks to this calculation uh, chart that I put in there for the SRM and the color. And I'm looking forward to testing out my uh, forced carb calcs, which I'm pretty sure they're right. I've used them over the years, just never actually included them on my spreadsheet, but they're there for you to use now. So if you like this video, you like this, uh, like my channel, you like the spreadsheet especially, it takes a lot of hours of, of effort to, uh, to go through and, and line check every single one of these malt sheets, uh, for example. It took a lot of my time. And yes, I did it for myself, but I, I am sharing it with you out there as well. So if you find this useful and you use my spreadsheet and you have not yet contributed, uh, please do so down in the link below. I have a PayPal account. Some of you want me to use Patreon. And for those of you who've, who've actually asked me the question, my response has always been the same. Patreon uh, kind of bends you over the barrel a lot in terms of their, uh, their take of this. It's somewhere in the 10% uh, re um, realm of everything you donate goes to them. PayPal, I use PayPal because it only takes about two to two and a half percent on average of the, of the cut. I get more money, your, your money goes further. And that's why I don't do Patreon right now. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe.